Hello everybody! Today we're finally going to be discussing the resort that is, by far, my most highly requested for an insider's guide. That's right, after all this time, I'm finally giving you guys the Vale Insider's Guide. Vale is an absolutely massive ski resort, so this episode is going to be split into five parts. I would highly recommend watching all of them, but right now we're going to start with the westernmost zones of Vale on the Lion's Head side of the mountain. So with that, let's begin an insider's guide to ski resorts, Vale. The furthest extremity of Vale is this Cascade Village area. Cascade Village is a resort hotel that has its own chairlift and trail to get in and out. Both the lift and run are technically open to the public, however I would highly highly recommend avoiding that area altogether. Cascade Way, despite not being steep at all, is blue for a reason. Cascade Way tends to have very poor snow or be very icy, is extremely narrow, and gets crowded at the end of the day. And, oh yeah, it requires you to walk or sidestep up the final pitch into Cascade Village. So if you're staying in Cascade Village, now you know what you're working with. The Cascade Village quad doesn't get lines at all, except small clusters of people when everybody aims to get on the mountain, generally about 9.30 or 10. One of the nicest things about Vale is that its lift fleet is nearly all detachable express lifts, meaning that ride time is never an issue. Cascade Village is the single exception to that. Despite having a theoretical ride time of just 8 minutes, I have sat on chair 20 for over 20 minutes before as the policy at the time required lift operators to stop the lift completely for anyone to load the lift going down, which was quite a few given that there is no green access into the village. 20 minutes is just insane to be sitting on any chair lift, so I would highly, highly recommend staying far, far away unless you need to be near. Speaking of downloading, although it doesn't show it on the trail map, if you're a green skier looking to stay in Cascade Village, fear not. You can traverse across the intersection of Practice Parkway and Cubs Way all the way over to the start of Post Road here, and then ride the lift down, all while avoiding any run not rated for beginners. This is technically the upper part of Post Road, which isn't shown on the trail map for whatever reason. Of course, you could probably just take Simba as well. Simba is not all that difficult. To be completely honest, I'm not sure why it's not green on this upper section from Eagle's Nest to Post Road. It's super wide, is consistently groomed, and isn't steep at all. It's not extremely busy, and it's in a generally quiet area of the resort. I would highly, highly recommend Simba as one of the first blues anyone does after progressing from greens. Now, if you're a lower level skier on Simba, be sure to get on the Pride Express, Chair 26, via Post Road. Simba gets much steeper below the lift and isn't like what I've just described. You definitely don't want to get stuck there if that's your first experience on a blue. So now that we're already talking about terrain, let's talk about the lion's head terrain as a whole. On this lion's head side, you have the two runs on the edge, Simba and Born Free, that are groomed pretty consistently. They typically aren't groomed top to bottom each night, but you can get around the ungroomed sections using runs such as Cheetah for Simba and Cub's Way for Born Free. Aside from those two, grooming seems to rotate between all the rest. For the most part, these little black sections don't get groomed, aside from Simba on certain days. In all honesty, the best advice I can give for the lion's head terrain is to be very aware of any drop-offs that you can't see what's below because there are quite a few of them. Out of all the trails on the Lion's Head side, my favorite has to be Buana when it's groomed. It's got some nice variety with lots of rollers, turns, and the likes. Born Free gets extremely busy, especially on the lower sections, so I much prefer Simba, but it's not unmanageable by any means. Some of the most overlooked runs on the Lion's Head side are this trio of blacks, minis, old nine line, and ledges. As far as blacks go, these are far from the most difficult around. They're narrow little mogul runs, but they're not super steep by any means, and they're a great escape from the crowds you'll find at a lot of the other blacks. The downside of these is that they're super short and difficult to lap, requiring going all the way down to the village and back up Eagle Bond. As such, they're a one-time type of run, something you only hit on your last run down at the end of the day, but I quite enjoy these runs. Above these blacks is the Bunny Hill, served by the Little Eagle Triple. I swear that Little Eagle gets the longest lines on the mountain because they move so excruciatingly slow. Honestly, if you can, take a lesson or go to Sourdough. I just don't even find it worth it when I look at those lines for the beginner chairlift. In between Little Eagle and the Blacks is a short little green zone that is a favorite of the kids. This small terrain zone is technically part of Lion's Head, but is lappable by Avanti, which I don't consider a part of Lion's Head. Just know that if you have kids, I would say that this little area is worth every bit of the traverse to get to and from it. Upper Ledges, a blue, is a really nice groomer. 
In parts B and C, as we start to move towards the Vale Village and Golden Peak sections of the resort, I'll discuss this quite a bit more. But for now, here's what you need to know. Vale has this massive, tangled mess of catwalks that can get you from almost anywhere on the mountain to almost anywhere else on the mountain. The catwalks are designated by the dashed lines on the trail map. Out of everything at Vale, this disaster of a road system is by far the hardest thing to navigate. As such, I would recommend trying to avoid the catwalks entirely, unless absolutely necessary. To apply this principle on the lion's head side, you'll most likely want to take Eagle's Nest Ridge to the Eagle's Nest, from which you can take Simba instead of having to navigate the disaster to the lookers left of Born Free. The area around Little Eagle can get pretty confusing with all the catwalks, but at the end of the day, all the runs end up dumping onto Cub's Way anyway, so you'll be getting to Avanti no matter what, unless you dive down one of the blacks. So with all that said, Let's talk lifts on the lion's head side. The big, big thing to remember on the lion's head side is to never, ever take the gondola if you can help it. The gondola is supposed to seat 12 people per cabin. In actuality, it's a far cry from that. And because 12-person cabins are so heavy, the spacing between the cabins is incredibly large. By my very, very rough approximation, I'd say Born Free moves 50% more people per hour than the gondola. And, oh yeah, not only do the gondola's lines move slower, but they're also longer. Heading to the Born Free Express Quad, Chair 8 is almost always significantly faster than waiting in line for the Eagle Wand Gondola, Lift 19. From the top of 8, you can take Cub's Way to the left to get to Avanti, which we'll talk about in Part B. Or you can traverse across to the Pride Express Quad, Chair 26. The Pride Express is one of my favorite lifts at Vale. Even on the worst of the worst days, when the lift lines are just unbearable at every other lift, Pride always seems to be empty. It's relative to the other lift lines, of course, but Pride is almost always the place to go if you want a surefire way to get away from the lift lines. And beyond that, Pride serves some really good terrain. In my opinion, Pride is the most underrated chairlift at Vale, and I would highly, highly recommend spending some time over there. Alright, so that about does it for Lion's Head. Now we've got to discuss Game Creek. Game Creek is a bowl, but I don't consider it to be one of the back bowls. While the back bowls are on the directly opposite face from the front side, Game Creek is almost perpendicular to the back bowls and front side. The Game Creek 6 pack, Chair 7, also happens to be the quickest way to the true back bowls out of Lion's Head. And because of this, it gets quite busy. In order to stick with my principle from earlier of avoiding the gondola, rather than going 19 to 7, I would recommend going 8 to 2 to 3, the latter two of which we'll discuss next part. With the lines at 19 and 7, the 3 lift route can often be just as quick as the 2 lift one. If you get to 7 and there's a long line, the line on the skier's right of the terminal tends to be shorter than that on the left. Now, as far as bowls go, Game Creek is by far the easiest. As such, it's also the busiest, but if you know when to hit it, it's terrific. In the early morning, when everyone is just using the lift to get to the true back bowls, few people actually stay in Game Creek, so if you're looking for some fresh cord or first tracks in a bowl, that would be the time to do it. I would recommend avoiding Game Creek between 10 and 1. The best time to be in the bowl, however, is from 1 to 3. In that window, the bowl is continually emptying out, and by the end, it'll feel like you have it all to yourself. So let's discuss the terrain options you have. Game Creek is a very well-rounded bowl. As a whole, it is pretty small, meaning it offers really short laps. Game Trail and Club Walk are both just roads, but Lost Boy is a really nice wide green, although it is a bit flat and narrow at the entrance at the top of the bowl. Of all of these blues in the Game Creek Bowl, most are groomed, and there's typically one or two left ungroomed. Whichever blue is left ungroomed is typically a great place to learn to ski moguls, as these blues are all pretty wide and not very steep. From Uzo over to Wildcard, you'll find mostly mogul blacks. And then there are good trees in between pretty much every run, along with in the Uzo Blade. One last thing. Due to the angle the sun shines at, the snow on the looker's right of the bowl is way better than the snow on the looker's left. That about wraps it up for the Lion's Head and Game Creek sides of Vale. Go ahead and check out parts B, C, D, and E right after this if you haven't already, which discuss the rest of the resort. Or, go check out another episode of Insider's Guide. As always, please leave any questions down below. Thank you all for watching. All my love, I'm out.